Summoner Wars is an expandable card-based war game from Plaid Hat Games and designer Colby Dausch. In Summoner Wars, two players face off as powerful summoners who command spells and warriors in order to destroy their opponent. It plays out in a bit less than an hour and is hugely expandable. There's a number of single deck expansions that either add reinforcements to existing factions or add entirely new factions to the game. The main core set has room to store all of these, and there are also two smaller starter sets, which provide two factions and a player mat. Each player starts Summoner Wars with a single faction deck and a player reference card. That player reference card will show you how your starting units will be arranged on the board. Then the rest of your cards get shuffled and placed face down in a deck to be your draw pile. The wound tokens and the dice go beside the main board, then the starting player is chosen and the game begins. So each turn of Summoner Wars breaks down into six phases. Draw, summon, play event cards, movement, attacking, and building magic. Players are going to take turns moving through these six phases until one player's summoner is dead. Last player standing is the winner. During the draw phase, a player draws up to a hand of five cards. Then a player can summon units. They pay the summoning cost that's listed on the card by shifting cards from their magic pile into their discard pile. Each card is worth one point. A summoned unit gets placed on the board in a square that's empty adjacent to a wall that that player controls. In the third phase, a player can play as many event and wall cards as they'd like so long as they meet their requirements. Event cards are going to trigger spells that affect your opponents, or give you a boost to rallying and controlling your own troops. Wall cards don't have any special effects, but they give you new spaces into which you can summon units, and they also provide a powerful obstacle between your enemies and your summoner. A wall is not affected by any special abilities that affect units, although it can be attacked. During movement, you can move up to three units up to two spaces each. And you can't move through other units, and you can't move diagonally. Some units have special abilities that are triggered by movement. So if you want to access that special ability, but you don't want to move your unit or give up your position, you can declare that that unit moves zero spaces that turn, so it counts towards one of your moved units, but you still get access to the special ability. In the attack phase, up to three of your units can attack enemy units and walls. Now, as with movement, you can't attack diagonally, and each unit can only attack once per turn unless they've got a special ability or an event card has given them an extra attack. Melee units, which are marked by a sword, can attack any units adjacent to them, while ranged units, which are marked by a bow, can attack a unit in a straight line from them, up to three spaces away, as long as it's not blocked by another unit. The attacking unit rolls a number of dice equal to its attack value, which is listed in the big circle on the card. It hits on a three or higher and deals one wound per hit. Once a target receives as many wounds as it has life points, then that unit is defeated. A defeated unit is moved into the attacking player's magic pile, so it can be used in future turns to summon more units. Units also have special abilities, which can be used to augment attacks or movement for that unit. Now in the final build magic phase, you can discard as many cards as you want from your hand into your magic pile, which is going to get rid of cards that you don't want and give you more summoning power for future turns. Summoner Wars can also be adapted to suit three or four players if you add in a second core set. So Summoner Wars is highly customizable. You can play a whole lot of different times with a bunch of different armies. As soon as you get tired of the ones in the starter set, go out and buy yourself some of those amazing expansions. There's a huge amount of them, and you can vary up the play a lot that way. However, a con that comes along with this is the fact that it is, at its heart, a really great two-player game. It's very good head-on-head, -head. so that means that if you start making it into a three- or four-player game, you start to notice that the rules get a little bit clunky, starts to feel like it's stretching to fill that kind of a role. You might not enjoy the game quite as much if you're playing with more than two players. Another drawback of Summoner Wars, for me at least, is some of the visual design. I find the art a little bit 
muddy and uninspiring and there have also been some really weird color choices made. The factions that come with the core set come in like three different shades of muddy purple and three different shades of muddy green and it can make the cards really hard to tell apart because everything's in the same kind of tone and color scheme and it's just really indistinct and I'm not sure why they went in that direction when they could have gone for a much more dynamic visual design. That being said, the game itself is very dynamic. This comes from the fact, I think, that it's got a very simple and elegant rule set. There's not a lot to learn, there's not a lot to set up, you've got a lot of units taking damage very quickly because it's very easy to hit, you've got a lot of movement going on, and the fact that all of this is done with a very small set of cards and almost no setup time means it moves really fast and you can get a really nice flow going with the game. 